Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. And let's get open for business on this morning's edition of Don't Sleep on the Dallas Cowboys because you literally cannot sleep on the Dallas Cowboys because things happen late in the evening, late at night, first thing in the morning. So you want to be up to speed with all that is America's team. Oh, boy. Things are getting interesting, guys. It's hump day. We have the Texans up next. Big game for us. Um, not only is it the battle for bragging rights in Texas, the our, our stepchild, you know, sister that's down there. You want to beat them. You need to beat them. We have to beat them because we want to get on the winning side of the season. We want to be three and two. And this is an important game. And we'll cover this more starting tomorrow. We'll, we'll start breaking down and looking at the Texans. Now, an interesting thing that happened yesterday, I, I did a video on it um, about Des Bryant. And I believe that Des Bryant's going to be coming in, probably not this week, but maybe next week for a workout with the Cowboys. Uh, that's just my own personal opinion and thoughts. It seems like there's a lot of stuff that's kind of going on, a little teasing here and there. You know, Des Bryant tweeted that, you know, he's – Hopefully be signing soon. He says he wants to be with the Cowboys. You got Tyrone Crawford who came behind and basically said, um, you know, why are you teasing and so on, so forth. So I think there is something going on behind the scenes. We'll have to wait and see. Don't kill me if it doesn't. It's just a gut feeling that I have. Okay. And that would be interesting because a lot of people had said to me, well, you're one of the people that wanted Des Bryant gone. Well, People make mistakes. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe we'll have to wait and see how it works. So a lot of people said, why would the Cowboys want to do this? Well, one, if you re-sign him now, and let's say it's a three, four, five million dollar deal, well, you saved $11 million on the cap. That's one reason you got him back for a lot less money than what you were going to have to pay. Okay? You got rid of that big contract. Two, you may have set the tone and got him to come back humble and hungry. Three, he's better than anybody you got right now. And in football, you got to leave your emotions at the door. It's about getting paid, and it's about getting about winning. And that's the bottom line. And that goes for Des Bryant. That goes for Jerry Jones. That goes for Jason Garrett. That goes for Scott Linehan. That goes for Dak Prescott. The bottom line is, what move can I make to get a win? That's all that matters. What can I do to get a win? Forget all the other drama. That's the single focus. And if they feel they got a better opportunity to win with a hungry Des Bryant, then you make that move. Were there problems with Des Bryant? Yes. Were there problems with him linking up with Dak Prescott? Yes. Were there problems between Des Bryant and the coaches? Yes. It's all true. But things change and people change us. So we'll see what happens if anything comes from that. <sighs> the thing I really want to talk about today, this morning, there is so much bias against the Dallas Cowboys. I don't know if that's intentional, if people truly don't believe in the Cowboys, or if it's just a hate for the Cowboys. But you at least need to be fair and balanced. You can say, I don't like the Cowboys. I, you know, like I said, I tell you, I don't like the Philadelphia Eagles. But I'll admit that they have a talented team and they still scare me. They're going through a rough patch, like I said, but I've got to give them props. They ended up having a, you know, an easier schedule, but they took advantage of it. They withstood injuries. 
They became innovators. I got to give them credit for it. I still hate them. Hate them completely, passionately. But you got to give credit where credit's due. And in the same way that people have bashed the hell out of Dak every single week, at least give him credit where credit's due. You have to look at last week's game and say, okay, he can throw the ball more than 10 yards downfield. He can do more than dink and dunk. As a matter of fact, his percentages, QBR, when he goes downfield, are in the top six in the NFL. The problem is we just don't go that often downfield. We don't have the horses that often to go downfield. They're getting open. But be that as it may, at least give somebody credit where credit's due. Demarcus Lawrence, right now, you have to look at him and say, he's dominating. Four games into the season, five and a half sacks. Since the beginning of last year, he's had 20 sacks. He has averaged a sack a game. A sack a game is what he has averaged over the last 20 games. That's pretty dominating. Even if you take this year's total out, just looking at last year, he was third. He was tied with Calais Campbell. But when you hear NFL Network and ESPN and stuff, they always talk about Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack, man, he's a one king, you know, wrecking crew. Or you'll hear about J.J. Watt. You know, J.J.'s back and everything else. You hear about all these other guys, but rarely do they really talk about Demarcus Lawrence. And so I started going back through, and this was going into the beginning of the season. Willie McGinnis, let's bring up our camera a little bit here. Willie McGinnis had his ranking of top pass rushers in the NFL. Now, at the moment, let's look at the list real quick. Right now, you got, of course, got Demarcus Lawrence with five and a half sacks. You got Khalil Mack with five, and you know I'm, I'm not disputing Khalil Mack is is, is a beast. Uh, you got McKinney from uh, from uh, Atlanta with five. You got J.J. Watt who's back with five. You got Miles Garrett with four and a half. Geno Askins with four. Um, Marcus Hunt with four. Uh, Dale Hunter with four. Cameron Jordan with four. They're all tied. Um, and Von Miller with four. You know, that, that's, that's good. This, this time of year, you get an average of sack a game. You're doing great. But here was his top pass rusher was Von Miller. And Von Miller is a beast. He's a wrecking crew, although I will say that he's come back down to earth just a little bit. He's still a beast, but I think he's getting a little bit more up there. So his rankings, again, you got Von Miller, number one, who's got four sacks. Then you got Aaron Donald, number two. Khalil Mack, okay. It's hard to argue with those. Then you got Emerson Griffin, four. You got J.J. Watt at five. You got Cam Jordan. You got Chandler Jones. You got Cameron Wake. You got Melvin Ingram and my boy Calais Campbell. And Calais. Funny. He didn't even think Demarcus Lawrence was one of the top ten. The guy who had third most sacks in the NFL last year. Hmm. Does that seem kind of funny to you? But listen when you watch the shows, how often they're they're talking about Khalil Mack. J.J. Watt, you know, the premier pass rushers, they don't seem to want to put Demarcus Lawrence in that category. And I'm not sure why, because when you look at what he was doing, let's be honest, last week, last week was not a great week for our defense. We had safety issues. Jeff Heath, you know, he forgot his geometry, bad angles. We had Anthony Brown give up some pass plays, you know. Uh, we shut down the Lions run run game, true. But it was really to Marcus Lawrence being that one man wrecking crew that got those three sacks that was a difference maker on that defense. And I dare say that he is the difference maker on that defense. Without him, 
it makes it that much harder for everybody else. Because teams are having to focus on that guy, because you know going in, we can't let Demarcus Lawrence go off. They're going to put a focus on him. That makes it easier for everybody else across that line. He makes the rest of those guys better. The fact that he's still able to get sacks like that when you know you have to stop him. You not only have the tackle on him, you have the tight end that will chip him or the running back that will be back there, but yet he's still succeeding. Averaging a sack a game, yet he's not considered one of the top pass rushers in the NFL. As Rodney Dangerfield says, no respect, no respect. I get no respect. Yeah. And even going into this season, you know, he did the same thing with Zeke Elliott. But it's time for you guys on NFL Network, ESPN, you sports writers and stuff, and realize that Demarcus Lawrence has come of age, that Demarcus Lawrence is one of the top pass rushers right now in the NFL. And he doesn't look to be slowed down anytime soon. All right, guys, it's hump day. Thank everybody for all the support, liking, commenting on the channel and things. Hopefully, we'll get the other channel back, and we'll be working with both of these. Um, I have something planned for later on today. Um, we're going to expand some of the stuff that we're doing because it's all about the NFCs. we got to win our division. So we got to focus about the Redskins, the Giants, <laughs> the Giants, and and of course the Eagles. So we're going to kind of grow. We're going to try something new today and I hope you guys will enjoy it. So as always friends, I got to get to my day job. I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. I'll see you guys soon with any news on the Dallas Cowboys.